What is going on, guys? Wiser here, coming to you with the recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. Actually, it's a little more than that. Um, I, this is my first video I've done since the beginning of the holidays. Uh, definitely took a few weeks off just to kind of enjoy Clash for for the game itself. Um, not really doing much extra content. Um, and just enjoying time with the holidays, my family. Uh, Christmas was freaking awesome, I just want to say. Uh, my little one got spoiled to no end. It was absolutely, uh, you know, for those of you that are parents out there, there's for those of you that aren't, there's really something different and something special about Christmas morning when you see your child's face light up like it does. Um, brings a whole new meaning to everything. And I don't know, I just had a great uh, great time over the holidays, so a lot to kind of catch up on here. So um, I do have a couple wars that I didn't really do a full, get a full recap for. We had a, a couple losses on our part, a couple really nice victories for uh, the clans of the likes of Three Point Park and Clautanamo Bay. Uh, sort of caught us on some ugly days and came up with some nice victories. So I'm going to kind of quickly go over that. do have a few attacks from the one war to show you as well as we did just finish another random matchup with North Watchers. Um, ended up coming up with a good bounce back victory for ourselves. So nice to see us sort of getting back on track here. We are two and two in the CWL and we are uh, not going to lie. We're getting a little concerned. We're really sort of trying to slap everything together and get our roster bolstered and uh, make sure that we, we come out with some wins here uh, in the second half of the season because we definitely did not want to start off two and two. Uh, but I'm very confident that we're going to come back and be extremely competitive here moving forward. For it. So I'm going to use this opportunity um, to show you a bunch of replays from the Clantanamo War, uh, Bay War, and from the North Watchers War. I do want to talk a little bit about sort of the state of the clan and our recruitment process um, and just discuss about sort of what, how we used to be versus what we're going to be striving for now. Um, so let's just jump right in here. Quickly, we're going to Take a quick little peek at the old Warlock. So as you can see, Guantanamo Bay and Three Point Park. Three Point Park with a three-star victory. Guantanamo Bay with a four-star victory. So a couple ugly losses for ourselves, uh, but some fantastic uh, showings by Guantanamo Bay and Three Point Park. Uh, did have this weird Asian clan we matched up. Foreign Glory lost there, though. But did have some nice wins in there versus Kronos, Golden Goblins, Spartans, War Whales. You know, we're going back almost two months now. Um, you know, but as you can see... From the last, you know, 23 days ago when we took this loss to Warren Glory, this was quite a bit of a, this was a good little mismatch. That was the one that Warren Glory reached out and offered to even it up. And we just said, you know what, guys, just let it roll. <clears throat> Ever since then, we've had some struggles. I mean, we did beat Kronos, but, had, you know, obviously these losses hurt a little bit. That, that winning against some more Reapers was nice as well, but... Um, we, uh, moving forward, we do want to be successful within the CWL. We definitely want to make the CWL too, um, which will sort of be formed at the end of this mid-season league. So we're really looking at what we do as a clan. Now, um, I'm going to jump into the Clantanamo, um, war here. And we're just going to uh, quickly check over. We did leave uh, a fairly, fairly good war on both sides, right? Crotonmo did their diligence. Uh, believe I had to use a bully or two. Uh, not really going to get into too many crazy details. I know we didn't have the greatest war ourselves. Had to use a few bullies. Didn't get any 10 versus 10 trips. Had a few dip fails. And that equals not a great war. So uh, there are awesome attacks in here. I'm going to flow through some of these. We're going to start off on Lion's Hit on number 15 here. Um... So like I was just mentioning, uh, we're making a few changes to our recruitment process. Uh, one of the things we've prided ourselves on in the past is, is how our family works. When you joined uh, the 2.0 family, you would go on a swarm. You would generally get anywhere from two wars to a dozen wars as your tryout uh, process, just as you get sort of assimilated to how we do things online how we post plans, um, you know, whether you, you just, that's your, that's your time to, to show whether you're going to be a good fit for Invicta. Uh, at that point, you will be moved up to Invicta. Now, once you're in Invicta, it's pretty cutthroat up there because there's not a ton of space that we've created in 2.0 for constant, you know, rotation of promotions. So sometimes guys can get stuck in Invicta for months and it can get really disheartening. If you're coming from another clan, if you're coming from another family, and you want to show 2.0 your stuff, sometimes that can easily be overlooked. So that's one thing as a clan that we're going to really, really try and get better on is 
constantly rotating, you know, our guys in and out of 2.0 and Invicta, constantly trying to recognize that good talent. You know, a guy puts in three or four wars and he's at an 80% triple rate. Well, we're going to make that room now. We're going to, we're going to overlook, um, Again, it's a very tricky line because one of the things I've said we've always prided ourselves on is the relationships we build within 2.0. Everyone in 2.0 has earned their spot there. They put in their time. Um, you know, they've done their diligence to help the family. And because of that fact, in the long run, you get good, solid relationships. So when you go on little funks like we are right now, um, people are more understanding. You know, you, you don't have these guys that. Um, are brand new, but in the same token, we need to make space for those guys. So we're definitely going to be streamlining our recruitment process. If you are a beast and it shows within wars, you're going to be slapped into 2.0. We're going to try and get you on that roster and give you a shot. Obviously, if that shot doesn't work out, uh, then we're going to be uh, we're going to be moving you around. But uh, at least so that opportunity is there for the new person. Um, that is awesome. They don't feel like they're stuck and invicted. Now, in the same token. <laughs> I believe we're one of the last clans, if not the last clan, that still doesn't like, uh, again, very tricky wording here. I shouldn't say doesn't like, but did not did not allow someone who was a known ex-modder to, to, to apply and be part of the clan. You know, a great example, one of our old good buddies, uh, KNX, for example, right? He, he, had his, he had his issues in the past. We love the guy. I met the guy in person. He's a really awesome guy. Uh, because of our stance and because of, of those facts that we try and keep the clan as pure as possible um, and don't feel like as leadership, we really want to be monitoring these people. We're going to relax that a little bit. Now, I'm not saying in any way, shape or form that we condone any form of cheating, including farm body, including all that crap. But at the same token, we... We do believe in, in giving people second chances. Uh, we do believe, uh, you know, specifically, again, I'll go back to the KNX case. I know that guy's never going to, you know, if he came back, he's never going to use use pawns in, in a war with us. He's never going to risk that um, again for us. And we definitely think that people deserve second chances. So we're going to be opening and lifting that um, sort of tight ass, <laughs> hard ass, uh, however you want to look at it, uh, stance that we took. Um, I think at first it was it was a good thing. I think for the most part, uh, they have a good control over uh, over the cheating now, especially with the way the CWL works. Uh, it's it's too it's too much of a risk. I mean, you risk getting banned from that league forever. You risk having your account banned forever. So I'm sure it still exists. It's just a heck of a lot more difficult uh, to sustain it, maintain it, and to do it in the closet, right? Because generally, you're gonna need a, you're gonna need some sort of um, uh, burner account, and obviously, that's not gonna happen. So you're risking your own main account if you actually want to do that stuff. Anyhow, not gonna blab on that anymore. But we are just we're loosening up our stance a little bit. Um, just in hopes that you know um, we, we can get the recruiting going again. Uh, it has fallen a little bit stale. Not gonna lie, we uh, definitely want to continue to get that fresh blood into the clan and work from there. So um, now, when you apply, you still will be applying to Swarm. However, say you're coming from War Wales for just hypothetically, and you put that in your app. Well, we're immediately gonna put a tag on you and. Probably only have you at one war in Swarm, throw you up an Invicta for two more wars, assuming your triple rate uh, backs up sort of what your application says, then uh, you're going to be moving to 2.0 right away and get a shot on our main CWL roster. End of the day as well, Invicta being in the CWL light is another option. Um, so that's something we're always need to be mindful of right now because we used to have no problems, you know, in Victa, we would we would be able to pull a guy up, no problem, wouldn't be a big deal. But now if they're on the CWL late roster, they cannot be on the CWL main roster. So there are some uh, tricky things uh, involved with that because uh, we don't want to lock someone in onto the Invicta roster and then want them in 2.0 because that's just not going to happen because you're going to have to wait to the end of the season to make any sort of roster changes like that. As well, um, and vice versa. We don't want to. We want to be very careful because if we give someone a shot early and put them on the 2.0 roster, 
but then they prove to not be a very consistent attacker or prove to be in a slump or just show that you know they weren't quite the best fit. Well, the unfortunate part in that instance is that they're locked onto our CWL roster and we can't just demote them down to Invicta and put them on the CWL light roster. That's not how it works. They're gonna have there's gonna be a longer waiting period. Um, for those instances where where we want to be moving people between C CWL rosters, you're just you're just not allowed. If you're on one roster, you're locked on that roster at the end of the season. That's how it is. So that's how we're going to play it. Um, but just something extra that we need to be very, very careful about when we're talking about moving people within clans, uh, because these rosters do lock people in uh, for certain amounts of time, whether we like it or not. So. <clears throat> Anyhow, I hope that clears some things up for you guys with the uh, with our recruiting process. We're really uh, really trying to just continue to make the client fun. You know, over the holidays we did a couple family scrims, did a couple very short uh, friendly challenges. Some of those guys went off to the five v five tournament. So again, it was just a really good overall atmosphere. Um, created by our family, and I, that's what I love. Those guys put in so much work. All the leadership team, you know, from from Swarm all the way up through 2.0, put in a lot just to continue to make things fun uh, in the clan. So that's something I really love about the family. So ooh, the check wiser is the only the only viewer hit. His attack is pretty much dying just because of how strong Lalo is. You look, I think this was the only viewer attack compared to like 20 Lalos we had. Uh, but just uh, the variation right now of Lalo, it's too powerful to not consider at least for uh, planning most of your attacks <clears throat> uh, but what i recognized with this attack was i could drop the queen on this corner get this funnel created even if even if this barracks didn't go down and or that cannon i was pretty confident that this uh storage is going to yank the queen further down and it does and that gold uh gold mine so you're going to see me create a little bit of a funnel on this side drop those bowlers another thing i recognized was Assuming the bowlers go up after that barracks dies. That's why I dropped that wizard, just to be sure of that. The bowlers are just going to walk up and around. They're going to have this air defense in target. Um, in fact, even take it down almost. Does it go down? Yeah, it does go down before the healers even get close. So these bowlers are going to be safe, walking pretty much around this whole base. Now, I'm going to meet up these Valks and this king and this queen with these healers. Bust right on into this first chamber. Now, I knew from this point. See, I envisioned all this. I envisioned this whole funnel on this side. This funnel on this side, I was going to get everything in here. Well, from here, even if you don't really know exactly where your Valks are going to go, there's only two options. They're either going to go basically to this air defense or this sweeper because they're both touching the wall. They're going to end up, the last building to go down is going to be this whiz tower. So most likely they're going to go right to this corner and go after that sweeper, open up this compartment, expo is going to go down. This stuff's going to go down. It doesn't quite play that way. But the only other option was they're going to go up to the air defense and then continue the way up to, to this meat of the base. So heal spell goes down. It's going to allow them to work through those walls. I was really sort of conserving the rages here. <clears throat> so there they go, right through that air defense. Going to continue on to the core. Pretty much not a lot of surprises here, right? So they continue on through, bust right on over to that other expo. They're taking care of all that stuff that... Queen is unfortunately locked up on the Hound. That was the only sort of scary moment because I'm looking at my Queen. I'm like, oh shit, she's going to die because the healer's locked on on the King and the Valks. She ends up bursting the Hound. And at this point, I'm like, oh, this could be trouble. I do have a poison I could have used up here. Unfortunately, I do not. Boom, there it goes. A little bit late on that. Does finish off those pups. Queen goes down, but it doesn't really matter. I still got the uh, two healers okay, uh, working on the bowlers on the outside. These Valks are about to burst uh, burst out and start working their way around the wall. King's going to finish off that wall piece, take care of the air defense here, and get it just in time to save that baby drag. And everything's going to work on down, take care of the expo and Tesla in that final compartment. No problem whatsoever. Down it goes, tree in the bag. All right. Du, 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 du. I think I have one more from this war I wanted to show. 27 JP showing us that hogs are still viable. You know, everyone's talking about the power of hogs, especially a little ways back when they changed the giant bomb damage. In my opinion, they're super weak and you have to have very specific bases like this one. JP recognized basically this hole from 10 o'clock all the way around to two, just like you have your hands on a steering wheel. This whole top half section of the base, 
there's only one, two, three spots for bombs, right? One, two, and three. There's a few spots for spring traps, but not many. So really, 20 hogs and a couple heals shouldn't have a problem taking out that top half section of the base. So he goes ahead and uh, gets the heroes in, uh, takes care of that client castle, takes care of the defensive archer queen, takes care of those Teslas, gets the bowlers in, nice little rage spell goes down, has to hit that queen ability though, because the queen was straggling. Doesn't really matter. Jump spells down, unlock in the section of the base that he wants. Let that king on in. Take care of as much crap as he can here. And then he's going to go ahead and income the hawk. So three on this whiz tower, a few more on this one, a few more on this one. Just sprinkling them in all from 10 to 2 or 2 to 10, whatever you want to say. Going to go ahead and get two quick heals down. Keep them all alive and working through the base. There goes that one bomb in one of the three locations I talked about. <clears throat> Just has to let the hogs do their thing. Finally hits one of those spring traps. Really, other than that bomb that he had a heal down for, and that one spring trap, no threats whatsoever. Uh, these two Teslas do pose a bit of an issue at the end, but really good sort of work with this baby D uh, in combination with the hogs. The baby D steps up, starts trying to take care of that one Tesla loosens it up just enough for the hogs. Hogs are going to barely make it through, but end up getting the mortar and the mortar. And still has a little bit of cleanup. Has four hogs in the bag for cleanup. A wizard, an archer on that corner builder's hut. Another corner hut at the top there. No big deal for JP. Bam, bam, bam. Beauty. Awesome. So, really good work, Lantano, babe. Very good victory for you guys. Moving on up. Checking out North Watchers. Um, overall, it was just a, a crazy war. Uh, we came out on fire. I want to say... I think we had 17 attacks left over once we cleared the nines. Our nines were just absolutely on fire. They came out... I think we had an 80% hit rate at some point uh, early on in the war after about 15 attacks we put in. So really nice job. Nine setting up the tens. Tens had a little bit of struggles getting these two secured. Finally ended up getting it done. Got a few triple attacks, but no 10 versus 10 action, unfortunately, but did have quite a few successful bullies and beyond. So let's just check out some of these triples down here. Start off with Robbie. <clears throat> nice little one for one trade on the more there. Boom, down it goes. I like the little use of the ice wizard here. Ends up helping out with the mortar because it targets the defenses, right? It skips these uh, these outer buildings, goes right to these defenses. Nice little job at that. Um, very minor, minor thing, but uh, just delaying that D the DPS on the goal. Allowing that wizard to do his uh, little bit of funneling work there. Goes ahead and gets the king, queen, everything in nice and tight. Bowlers are in the base, under the rage. Everything's getting smashed down. There's a heal spell down there too, I believe. Letting everything through to that expo chamber. Just got to smash that defensive king. Get that hound burst. Poison is down, helping out with the pups. <clears throat> gets a huge section of this base taken care of. Now has these two hounds come in, basically from the 9 o'clock. Getting the loons in from all angles. I think you want these two just a little bit lower on that cannon, but no big deal. I'm gonna work through that stuff. <clears throat> two more down on each arch tower, down around six. Gonna work everything in. And even as the queen and wizard step up, take care of that air defense. Didn't even need the hounds here whatsoever. Kill squad is still going. Now just has to worry about this Tesla farm on the back end. Finally gets one of the hounds to burst. It's a little interesting. Uh, Free spell on the back end there. Hey spell goes down. Gonna rip through those Teslas. Boom and boom and kaboom. <clears throat> Only a wizard tower and mortar to go. One thing I'm seeing about these Lalo's guys is notice he has no cleanup troops left. I mean, he does have sort of some wizards already working around the base, so obviously that was important. Um, I'm finding the majority of my fails with um, any sort of Lalo's is it coming down to cleanup again. Uh, for myself, I get a little overexcited when deploying my balloons, and then you end up not saving the two or even one balloon. You just save one balloon. I don't know how many raids of mine that would have saved. 
Um, so something to think about when you're doing your Lalo's, guys, always, always keep that wizard, hang on to that couple minions, hang on to that one balloon, it could save your ass at the end. And more than likely, you don't need that extra balloon to help finish off the defenses of the base. Should be saving it for cleanup. If you're like me, you get scared, you get worried, you end up just throwing down all of your balloons, making sure they get through all the defenses, and then you don't have enough for cleanup because they're so goddamn slow. Here's SB going in with a little bit of a stoned Lalo here. I like this choice. 13 balloons and a hound uh, for the back end. He's going to go ahead and rate in at this first air defense. He's going to jump into the next two air defense. The only thing he's really got to worry about uh, is the queen. So he brings a second jump to allow all three golems to get in there. Just do huge tanking. The bowlers in there under the rage doing their thing. Poison spell down. Take care of those clan castle troops. Ends up losing his king here. Um, doesn't get the full ability out of the deal, but the king ends up finally getting over that queen, smacks her down, defensive queen is dead, goes ahead and starts the Lalo, there's only one air defense up here to go, starts sending in the balloons to make sure he gets a little bit of protection for the remainder of his kill squad here. <clears throat> nice little loon on the outside, do a little tanking, try and let this bowler get that cannon down, I think he gets some just missed him like the slivers of health on those two defenses <laughs> hilarious but he's got far far too many balloons here they're just working in see again though like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten probably got a dozen balloons up for only a mortar a cannon and an arch tower and these two literally had slivers of health left but take take a look at these uh the air skellies here doing work on these balloons ends up they end up taking i believe all of these balloons out by the end, but he's just got so much cleanup on the bottom of this base. He's got a wizard here helping uh, helping out the pups. King's about to bust through that wall, start working on that trash from the outside. The balloons end up taking care of a few of the trash buildings before they all get taken down. All of a sudden, those skellies get in range and archers jump in. Get him! Get him! Down they go. Tree in the bag from a man. Sports buff. Beauty. Uh, another one here. Bucko, very interesting base design, like this sort of uh, odd, I think, uh, Archer Tower Chamber, I don't know, if anything, I would have put the Expo there, maybe, I don't know, it's kind of interesting, I'm going to try to build a base with a similar concept, but um, not with an Archer Tower, I think I would use an Expo, I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. <clears throat> nice little suicide hero though by Bucko, basically just saying I'm going to penta the shit out of this base. So in comes the first two hounds, sorry I should say quad Lilo this base, but he brought like 26 balloons or something like that. He's just going to send them in from all angles. Really nice spell placements here you're going to see by Bucko. First rage gets everything right on in. Third hound goes down, you do tanking for those wizard towers, gets that quick haste down, push those uh, loons right onto those wizard towers ASAP, down they go. Go and down they go. Beautiful. Last hound is in. Now I'm going to be doing tanking on this nine o'clock air defense. Nice little rage spell through the core. Push everything in on through those sweepers. He's got a handful of balloons. He's going to now work uh, clockwise around the outside of the base. Really just needs to worry about this air defense here. That expo there. Nice haste, like nice recognition. Most of his balloons were working on the outside, so he could have got tunnel vision, those ones on the outside, and not seen this clump going through the core at that air defense, but it does take care of it early. Still has six balloons in the bag at this point for cleanup. Absolutely crushed it, Bucko. Really nice job, man. Boom. Hidden hut in the corner. <clears throat> of course, Mr. Tywin Lannister. Just good old shattered, uh, shattered Lalo here, uh, Bull Lalo. Two golems are in. We're gonna go ahead and get that funnel created. Nice and easy at twelve o'clock. Very, very compact base design. If you can get, um, I think what MBD realized here, if he can get his troops into this twelve o'clock compartment and jump over, he's gonna have access to pretty much all the air defense. Uh, you're gonna see that jump go down, and he's gonna get in. Clan Castle goes out, so he's going to get those poisons down. Poisons, poisons, poisons. Ah, there they go. At least one poison. There's the second poison. Down it goes. Queen's under rage. She's just working the crap out of that stuff. Bowlers are smashing everything. Everything goes in. Two air defenses are down already. 
Queen takes a little bit of a jaunt to the outside here. So that was kind of unfortunate. But he's got that golem in there, tanking the expo, tanking everything. Well, the bowlers, guys, a couple bowlers standing in a rage. <laughs> a little sliver of health on this bowler here. <laughs> Still doing work. <laughs> Doesn't really matter, though. He's got the hounds in. He's got the balloons in. Air defense number three is down. And if you look, there's only <laughs> this stuff on the outside being a Tesla. And the Arch Tower, nice little quick recognition. Gets the Tesla to go down. Air defense goes down. Probably a little preemptive on the balloons up here. Um, maybe he was just trying to get them down fast enough. But two balloons was not going to get through two wizard towers like that. Um, so I might have just waited because this stuff was going to go up there anyways. And then maybe you were going to get, oh, the hound burst anyways. As you can see, a couple cannons, a little bit of cleanup. MBD comes away with the triple. Bam, 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 bam. And the hut. Those freaking builder sets, I tell you. Uh, all right, I think there's one more I want to show here. Mr. Cass. Bringing another Shattered Lalo. Very, very common uh, at 9 and 10, actually. Almost every 10 on 10 triple I'm seeing right now is some sort of sort of Shattered Bull Lalo. A um, little bit of variations here and there, depending on the base, depending on the opening. Nice little uh, balloon here to take care of this Tesla. Boom, boom, boom. Just protects that whiz just long enough to finish off that funnel. Nice wide, wide funnel here for Cass. Bowlers are going to be in nice and clean. Queen is in clean. Uh, Poison is going to have to go down here to help out that king. <coughs> there it goes. Jump is down. I like how the wall breaker made the second layer of wall. That was kind of cool. <laughs> Could have pushed that jump spell right on over and let everything into that expo chamber. Doesn't matter. King's going to just whack away and a beating a, beat a hole in that wall. Queen's still in there helping out. In come the, in come the loons, right? Has a few on this outside using the kill squad uh, as tanks. Does not even need to drop the hound, but there's a hound in on this last remaining air defense. Uh, poisons are, or sorry, haste are down, pushing these balloons in as quickly as possible over to that air defense. Down it goes, just in time, right as the hound bursts. Just got to get in on over. Nice heal spell, too, to protect his balloons while the wizard tower just having free range with that Tesla. Down go all the defenses. Sir Cass coming away with it. Boom, boom, boom. Again, guys, clean up. Clean up, clean up. He's got obviously got a lot here, but that hut, man, I'm telling you, these huts in the corners are the killers of these Lalos because if people are not saving that one balloon or saving that wizard, it can mean a 99% very, very quickly. So anyhow, guys, glad I can catch up. Uh, nice to get this video out here uh, second week of January. We'll be back on track, do match up for uh, the second half of CWL, uh, mid-season uh, week five starts tomorrow. We're going to match up, so we'll definitely have that uh, recap for you coming this weekend. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think I'll call it an afternoon here, guys. That'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser, just trying to help you beg that next tree start. Till then, I'm out.